good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. It is October 1st, and we're going to gear you guys into the new October month of uh, Missoula and just kind of happening things here and there, what's going on in Missoula. Just first things and first most is that MCAT is doing a bunch of workshops. If you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about MCAT and learning the technical aspect of running your own show like myself, doing a podcast, even editing with either Adobe or Final Cut Pro, some of you out there want to learn some of DaVinci Resolve, we know some of that stuff, but we don't have it in workshop form because we haven't workshopped it ourselves. Um, but we have we are well versed, and we also are having a Photoshop class, which we do on Fridays. But you do have to sign up; it is RSVP, and so we have a bunch of those, and you can look up those online at MCAT.org, or you can come in, um, a, or you can call in at five four two six two two eight. We also have our Saturday drop-ins, which happens every Saturday from about one to three, and they're geared for kids about. 8 to 14 we say 9 to 13 but we're kind of flexible with that we you know most kids are pretty savvy on picking up uh, the uh, stop motion software which is basically just two uh, buttons on the computer hit enter to take a picture hit spacebar to watch your video and then we can help you with the rest we have on staff with plenty of years of experience i think we've done this for over five years so it's a great experience for kids and is it is absolutely free it is first come first serve and we limit it and cap it out at about six so that's a little bit of advertisement for mcat but let's jump right into uh some of the news things that are happening as well is r kelly has been found guilty of his crimes in federal court the r&b singer was uh guilty of sexually exploiting uh, children uh, racketeering and sex trafficking. He also uh, and he'll be, uh, before and and in sentencing he'll see uh, a minimum of ten years to life. Pretty much uh, can be traced back to the early 1990s when he married Aaliyah at the age of 15, so he could get her an abortion. Aaliyah Dana Houston, singer and former R. Kelly ba backup dancer, died in a plane crash in 2001. But others testified knowing of their relationship started in as early as 13 or 14 when she was that age. 30 years of abuse finally concluded with a guilty verdict after new interest in the case sprung from the 2019 documentary Surviving R. Kelly. In U.S. news, Congress is going uh, is going to is going to Congress, where Joe Biden, who's been pushing for the 3.5 trillion dollar infrastructure, has been missing from the public eye. While Joe Manchin and uh, Christian Sinema have publicly said that they now support certain measures that involved money going towards climate change and drug pricing for big pharma. Big pharma is kind of like the blanket term for big business in the pharmaceutical world. I'm sure you probably know that Obamacare, uh, as it was coined, expanded Medicaid in many states, but 12 GOP-controlled ones left 2.2 million low-income households to find other means with Democrats controlling both chambers of Congress um, in the w and the White House health uh, experts say it could be the only time to, to such fix uh, to the Medicaid gap which will be possible for many years sorry about my language everything sounds good for the most part both the GOP senators voting know pretty much everything the Dems put up there there are only two uh, two Dems that pose a problem which are West Virginia Joe Manchin and Arizona Sen State Senator Christian Cinema, but in most cases they have voted in party lines. In the end, their hold uh, their hold uh, out is just looking for the best deal for them possible. Yesterday, uh, yesterday, Missoula's Health Department COVID Incident Commander Cindy Farr released an update to COVID in Missoula. Here's a clip uh, of her talking about vaccines for kids kids age uh, five to eleven. Um, it's expected that Pfizer vaccine will be approved in five to 11 year olds in the coming weeks. Um, parents, we're strongly encouraging you to use legitimate information and talk to a pediatrician when it comes to making health decisions for your child. We're um, sadly already seeing a lot of misinformation online about vaccines for this age group, despite trials showing that they are perfectly safe. Um, we strongly encourage parents to get their children vaccinated as soon as the CDC approved the vaccine for that age group. It is a common misconception that COVID-19 doesn't get children very sick, but that's actually not the case at all. Um, Delta is different in kids than the previous strain of the virus. Children are getting sicker. Children are also impacted by long COVID and multi-system inflammatory syndrome, which is linked to COVID infections. So even if you think your child would be fine if they got COVID, you just never really know until they get it. And that's a gamble that just isn't worth taking. All right, so that was uh, Cindy Farr. Uh, and she also mentioned if you want to l learn more information, you can go to uh, 
uh, 258-INFO for more information from the City County Health Department. And so far, the National Guard has been deployed, and Mayor John Engen went on CD CNN to plead with the, national, with the nation to send National Guard to help alleviate staff shortages in hospitals. And they have been helpful in keeping the area sanitized, but they were hoping that they would help with the care for the patients. The hospitals have been stressed with a record-breaking uh, 58 hospitalizations. Recently, we've seen an uptick in deaths with 11 for folks uh, middle-aged to older, uh, most of which are unvaccinated, and only a few were from outside of Missoula. They spoke to the uh, they spoke on the booster shot, and Pfizer recipients uh, are eligible, but you have to be 65 and older. You have the pre-existing condition, but for the most part, I think the biggest theme that uh, from this uh, video is that you have you should probably have a, a better relationship with your doctor and have a better communication and understanding with them rather than going to uh, www medicine.com or something like that. It's best just to talk to somebody who is in the healthcare f uh, f uh, f uh, position as well. Um, and also, just kind of speaking from what I've noticed from Cindy Farr, her channel no longer is taking public comments. Uh, last week, there were some public comments of misinformation and, and threatening manner. You can see them on her YouTube channel, Cindy Farr, for the last couple weeks. And so far in Montana, there has been a climbing c a number of COVID cases with more than 1,300 new cases since September 29th, and the seven-day average is about 858 for the state. With, the total cor uh, with of course, Missoula is above a 100 uh, seven-day average in Missoula. Uh, the current total is 11,000, um, uh, 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 less than 12,000, but it's 11,763 active cases in the state, according to the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services. The information at this point does not include data on whether cases occurred among vaccinated or unvaccinated uh, people. Uh, the cumulative number of hospitalizations uh, in Montana due to the virus is 7,657. Uh, more than half of Montanans are vaccinated right now. Uh, but, you know, just like think about it like this. Uh, they have hospitals and they want to keep the floors open for patients who go in there for general care. Uh, so they have designated floors for COVID patients. So they kind of separate the COVID patients from the other patients uh, to mitigate the spread, which is why you're probably uh, you might be wondering is like, oh, well, why don't you just kind of have the rest of the hospital do it? It's like that one of the reasons it's like it's a it's a pathogen. It's a virus. So you want to basically prevent it from spreading. So there are some floors that are empty because they're designated for non COVID related things and they want to keep them as separated as possible because it's highly infectious. All right. So up next, we have a video made in house from our general manager, Joel Baird and Neil Wells. Uh, this was from last Saturday's Missoula's Clean Energy Expo hosted by Climate Smart Missoula. And with this. Uh, here is this, and I'll be right back. Representing Democratic Socialists of America, uh, the Western Montana chapter. I'm a member of 350 Montana, and uh, we're here to push electric cars and try to speed up the revolution that's going on in transportation. We're uh, with Citizens Climate Lobby, and we are advocating for uh, carbon fee and dividends. So we are MUD, and we're a library that's been in town for 40 years. Um, it's our 40th anniversary this year. We're very excited. And we're trying to build a campaign so that we can have our own power grid, our own, produce our own electricity, and distribute it fairly and equitably to the citizens of Missoula. Teslas cost a little bit more than uh, an internal combustion engine car of the same size and quality, but there are some big savings that people need to think about. One is service is practically nil. I've had one service on this car in three years. Since if you were to decide to decrease your carbon footprint and the amount you receive back in the fee would cover the amount of increase in cost you would pay. And it's kind of nice to not have to buy every one of your tools and everything. So we have tile saws, lawn mowers, weed whackers, chop saws. We have pretty much anything you'd need to work on your yard and your house. And yeah, we've been around for a really long time and we've got it pretty dialed, so. And we're hoping that everybody considers 
Three things. What brings you joy? What is the work that needs to be done to solve our climate crisis, this emergency we're in? And then finally, what can you bring to this issue? What's your niche? And it's a really great way that we have been thinking about what brings you joy, what is the work that needs to be done, and, and um, what can you bring? And so we're asking people to go back to the band show sometime maybe after we're done up here and, and write that out, draw that out a little bit, and let us know what you think your niche is, because there is something for everybody. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about movies that are coming out this weekend. It's time for your pre-critic, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing but this poster. Hey, Tony Soprano and Al the Gabagoo is all back with a prequel movie about the, ra the, the rise of a high schooler who become known as a notorious mob boss from a fictional HBO series that had to scramble to make a movie after James Gaffaldini, uh, Gaffaldini died. Uh, this story shows a very intelligent kid and his mother in disbelief as they... Uh, she loses the control of the troubled kid looking for connection into the mob. Uh, a lot of big stars are in this movie and have a new face putting on the series at risk for diminishing his legacy. Uh, you could watch this movie or remember the series as is. Everything doesn't have to connect. We don't need a mob boss in the manic universe like we had in the 50s. Um, up next, we got, yes, and an, uh, Eminem. Gonna do a new rap, Carnage. This movie ain't garbage. It's Venom. Let there be Carnage. Anyways, a continuation of a movie that saw some money to justify a sequel. Watch Woody Harrelson don a Carnage red symbiote and a more realistic wig as uh, he is a kind of murderer porn type of people somewhat like about unchecked power and flexing it. Anyways, watch yet another CGI heavy uh, fight between two uh, pl uh, plus two aliens uh, to stop each other while also looking into the baggage shoehorned into an hour and a half. The movie is good because it's going to be short and it's not a two and a half, three hour uh, epic uh, cinematic <laughs> experience. Uh, up next we got a kids movie so while you're bringing your uh, uh, boys to a uh, 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 comic book movie you can bring your smaller children to a uh, even more kind of like disturbing kind of a uh, series because hey Adam Sandler uh, Adam uh, Adam Sandler's no Adam's <laughs> Adam's family has been known kind of being like embrace the weird brace the goth this time the humanoid CJ monsters that are not venom comes Adam's family too uh, a show and genre that toted the lines of negativity to a positive like tone uh, Morticia would say, death is such a wonderful end, and her husband would be, Katamiya, kiss, kiss, kiss. Uh, the kids, Wednesday and Pugsley, uh, which is a terrible name for kids, like seriously. Maybe one was, uh, uh, it, it, it's terrible for a fat kid. On their own adventures of being homeschool goth kids interact with the sheeple of the world. I, this is a sequel, so they're going to on vacation, I guess, and they're going somewhere else to d do their own thing. Uh, bu -bu 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 this is a sequel, so they're going, bu -bu 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 games, winning, and uh, they're basically going to use their unique talents to uh, basically dunk on the polo shirt wearing preppy families because reasons all right here's the speed round are you guys ready bunch of movies coming out this weekend uh, streaming whatever Titan. not sure what to say about this movie the picture implies long history of violence and wearing metal clothes and cars and such the trailer is very confusing uh, confusing showing domestic violence and twerking on cars old Henry Cowboy movie about redemption, probably. A farmer g gets left into crime because of greed or something uh, and fights against the powers that be. Uh, also something about uh, a band seizing his farm uh, might play into this as well. And finally, you got girl power. Guns, guns, guns. Dimensions of badass women because they need to be a fantasy to help girls find their own strength through gun violence. Not really. I wanted to end this segment but to glorify vi gun violence, but whatever. Up next, we got dubbing stuff. And this one features a, a movie uh, from... Uh, Basically, it was kind of like a cautionary uh, comedy movie about, uh, um, I don't know. I, I don't really know what this is about. Uh, that's, that's the nice thing about dumb stuff. I just redub a movie with <laughs> based on absolutely nothing. But the movie fr is from the 1951 movie, Behave Yourself. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Sup? Oh, oh, oh yeah, you might be wondering why I'm talking to you. And yes, I do dream in black and white, and yes, I'm using this as a narrative tool to talk to you directly. 
usually dub and stuff doesn't have some kind of introduction or anything like that, but we usually have a pretty strong tail ending of this whole thing. Uh, oh, quit breaking the fourth wall. Oh, <laughs> sorry, but... <coughs> oh, jeez, what am I going to come up with next? Ugh, my third wall breaking. Oh, man, if I only had something to bounce off of. All right, uh, let's check my pockets. Mm-hmm. All right. Huh. <coughs> I'm coming. Ooh, hey, oh, ah, I can't. Whoa, 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 hold on there a second. Just give me a oh, chance. Oh, wow, it's a doggy. Now I like you. Oh, give me some, oh, oh. <laughs> What a precious little doggy, and I'm all here about it. <laughs> oh, look, it, it gave me a note. Perhaps it's a, I wish you were my best friend. Oh, Aww. <laughs> oh I didn't know that dog could write. Oh, wow, it's mm. like, that dog seems a little too trained. <laughs> uh, well, oh. Uh, what, no ring? Oh, wow, the dog's curing cancer. I wouldn't put much thought into that. Just forget about yes, it. Yes, Mama. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't you just like it when movies skip over a lot of plot points? Oh, just... I made you a morning cocktail. <laughs> Take that, liver. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, you know what about, yeah... Uh, no, please elaborate. Ooh, or shall I elaborate? <laughs> uh, sh 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 this isn't the perfect time for this. What are you going on about? Oh, God, I got you a dog, and this is how you treat me? I'm a dog person. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're a dog person. Mm. We're dog people. Mm. Can't you just treat me with a little bit more respect? We share a very special dog, and... Listen... We, I, uh, uh, Will you uh, stop doing Jerry Lewis in comical effect? You're, you're not Jerry Lewis. And I'm not Jerry Lewis. And we're not Jerry Lewis. You really need to stop talking in the first, second, and third person. It's really annoying. You need to stop talking about yourself. But I'm me, and you're you, and together, we could be Team Rocket. You could be James. He's so cool. Oh, James. Ooh. Should we put on the outfits? Mwah. Come on. Okay. Hmm, this has got to be one of the more riskier. Dubbin' stuffs? Uh, we quit breaking the fourth wall. That's my thing. I could just use a little bit more support from you. Hug attack. Don't you worry about me. I've got your back. No matter what. You're a dog owner after all. That wasn't just some random stray that just came up and... Yeah, it's uh, totally my dog. Mm. I'd rather be a stray. Oh. I've made a lot of mistakes. All right, moving on. Let's talk about uh, <laughs> some city council stuff that's happening. Uh, kicking things off, they're talking more about the CBDG grant. Uh, a little bit of ba uh, background, you know, it's grants from the CARES Act, uh, ARPA funds, American Rescue Plan, all that stuff. They're trying to figure out ways to uh, deviate and help people with affordable housing, keeping people at homes. And so far, they invited uh, somebody from NeighborWorks and Kia P uh, Peterson with the nonprofit talks about this program. And this is what she had to say. Um, we've been doing this program for over a decade. It's well established nationally um, and is a really fantastic way to support preservation of this really important source of naturally occurring affordable housing. Um, most of the residents who live in these communities are homeowners. And as we all know, the access to homeownership continues to be further out of reach in our community. So we see this as a um, really great way to support existing residents. Okay, so I have uh, I've also uh, uh, given um, information about neighbor work neighbor works to people coming to the library as well. You know, people who are you know struggling and you know like there's a lot of programs in place in the Missoula. You know, uh, you know they're they're definitely a step up uh, from like you know de definitely being chronically homeless and going to the Pavarella Center. So I try to uh, figure out ways to help them without directly saying like, oh, just go to the homeless shelter. So uh, from there we dive into the neighbor works has moved to help temporary housing like mobile homes sustain their parks by encouraging locals to buy the land around them. Some fit po fit po pitfalls in pricing has made it difficult to continue the trend. And here's Ms. Peterson once again. What we've seen in the resident-owned community program is historically we've been able to support this program without 
subsidy without grant dollars, without um, government dollars. And that's really been our, our goal is to have a program that doesn't compete with other funding sources. Um, but in the current market, that just is not realistic. Um, there's so much pressure for redevelopment, such an incredible pressure on rent increases that we just aren't able to purchase these properties at the rates that um, current sellers are looking to achieve. And of course, you know, as you can see here, you know, just like seeing the basic rent where it's as low as like $400 a month for mobile homes installments, you know, you buy the mobile home and then you just uh, pay for the land that it's on. And then, you know, just uh, uh, just seeing the big jump to $1,000 uh, per month to support property acquisition preservation is kind of crazy. And they're hoping that this grant would ultimately uh, be moved towards helping them have a lower uh, rate of mortgage payments for the land that they own. Uh, housing market, as you know, is becoming more competitive and easy for property owners of uh, these mobile homes, mobile parks, to basically just kind of sell out and just get the best deal. Um, they, you know, uh, big synergy uh, from the city is added through parks and trails projects uh, on this as well. Uh, not only is you know neighbor uh, neighbor works a big thing, but the uh, Missoula Parks and Recreation have been a big part of these grants in working on ways to connect trails and improve the areas just around them, just to make it a a better place to live. And this is what Donna Glockler goes into. Going a little bit deeper, in especially in the uh, uh, little uh, section uh, by the river where the uh, where Russell Street goes towards the POV. And so this is kind of like how they're trying to figure out a uh, best way to improve the area and have parks and trails for this area. We've been uh, working with area residents at uh, downtown Lions Park, which is a park located just off of California Street on the north side of the Clark Fork River near Broadway. It's surrounded by uh, multiple properties uh, that currently serve um, marginalized populations. Uh, there's affordable housing, Missoula Youth Homes. Uh, there's a significant amount of housing related uh, in providing services for those individuals with disabilities. And it is in a uh, low moderate income neighborhood. It is in our long-term plans. And the ways and the reasons that we feel this project fits the CDBG CV is that during the pandemic, we've seen an immense increase in use of parks, trails, and open spaces. And this is an area that's largely underserved. Okay, and so she goes on to talk a little bit more about, um, let's see, Overall, she talks about the uh, park infrastructure is beneficial to all Missoulians. It's open space and gives a sense of pride in our neighborhood, which can go into conjunction with housing projects and also improve and uh, up the quality of housing and pricing as well. It's like if you live in a better place, you know, you can have a really nice house, but it's if, if it's in a crappy neighborhood, good luck trying to sell it. Uh, well, nowadays, you can pretty much sell anything. It's kind of crazy. Uh, David Gray, Lions Club and a proponent of Lions Park, uh, speaks a little bit more on this uh, during uh, the public comment portion of this. It's wonderful to see something happen with the Missoula Lions Park. Um, it really needs improvement to serve that neighborhood. There is tons of affordable housing and some accessible housing next door, and I really support the park being improved. Yep, and so uh, he, I think he go, oh, no, no, it's, it moves, we're moving on, sorry. The public hearing will be open until uh, this Monday when it will be voted on and then it'll be submitted for the CBDG grant. So, so far they're just trying to figure out a good plan and a lot of these meetings are for just to bolster uh, underwriting and grant writing and stuff like that just so they can be like, hey, this is the plan and this is what we're gonna do with the money once we get it. Uh, next, we're talking about rezoning, but before you tune out completely, of course you probably tuned out a while ago, this location is at 500 South Higgins, AKA, AKA the former Missoulian building that held our local newspaper. The city wants to rezone as a urban center. Uh, Cassie Tripard, uh, associate planner for the city of Missoula, Missoula uh, kicks things off with this. This location meets all of the criteria above. The parcel is located along a commercial portion of South Higgins Avenue across the bridge from the urban core. There is existing infrastructure serving the property, including roads, sidewalks, bike lanes on Higgins and water and sewer service. Parcel is currently served by city fire and city police. And additionally, bus stops serving Route 6 and 8 are located within two blocks of the property as shown on this map. Okay, so as you can actually see from here, is that this is the building that would essentially replace uh, the Missoulian. This is kind of a, uh, this is the idea. There's no, uh, uh, there's no, um, 
concrete uh, idea of which they want to do with it, but this is kind of like the idea. As you can see, you know, mixed use kind of deal building right here, uh, kind of an open kind of valley, like a, a plaza kind of concept with uh, some apartments up there. And then also have some on street uh, businesses, you know, for like cafes and dining and stuff like that. I think, you know, it's just going to be like, you know, what they're doing with, uh, I think, uh, Wyoming Street, kind of like going through a McCormick Park and that uh, new section that they're building up there. I think they want to kind of continue that kind of vein of stuff just to kind of really uh, bolster the area in the downtown Missoula area. So they're definitely looking to help uh, mitigate and hopefully rezone it for the possibility of building this kind of thing as well. Uh, but of course it is still, for the, for the most part, it is uh, uh, part of their uh, growth policy, the inward uh, grow grow inward according to the Missoula growth policy that sees high density in urban development. Lee Enterprises owns th the owned or owns the Missoula and is in the process of selling and decided to scale back on the newspaper business, especially since they stopped stopped the presses last March permanently. So far, the city can regulate how big building how the big the building and in the area that covers based on the zoning. They talked a little bit about uh, downtown Millennial Building and the historic Wilma Theater, just in terms of just like height. And a lot of the restrictions in terms of just like the high buildings in, Mo in Missoula had to do with the airport. Up next, the city looks to continue funding and hoisting the bridge apartments off Broadway in hopes to keep folks who have de mental, uh, developmental disorders stay in place, you know, ADA compliant, that kind of stuff. Gwen Jones talks a little bit more on this and about how important it is to keep these residents in the bridge apartments. If you're making, if you basically have an income of $900 a month, you are disabled and unable to work, um, we as a community should be taking care of these people and making sure that they are welcome and safe and housed in our community and that is the opportunity that we have in front of us today okay so uh just a little bit more background on what's happening with that the bridge apartments are uh uh, are kind of uh, in the process of selling, and so the city wants to facilitate the sa the sale to the new owners by keeping the people who are in there still in there. So uh, Jesse Ramos uh, is as the dissenting voice and believes that the taxpayers shouldn't pay for another portion of the population. This is what he had to say. Unfortunately, we are not supposed to be using tip dollars in this way, and I also believe that the long-term consequences and financial ramifications of this could affect multiple generations. Uh, and those those uh, impacts, as Mayor, would affect uh, the most disparate uh, income folks in our community, people that, that don't have a lot of money. They get hit with, with government irresponsibility the hardest, unfortunately, when they see tax hikes and various other fees, fines, surcharges uh, that are all made up to cover any sort of um, misuse of government funding. Unfortunately, like we've seen uh, many times in the past, um, and in addition to that, I, I really don't like the idea that we're going to be paying Western Montana Mental Health um, some sort of fee. Um, I, I'd like to, to know what that fee was. Um, won't change my decision, but the fact that uh, we're going to be paying them uh, as some sort of manager on this just doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense to me. All right, so uh, Jesse Ramos, uh, they respond to him pretty quickly, and they mentioned that from Jesse's perspective, there are federal grants and dollars that can be used, and the city of Missoula can look into further avenues, which they have, uh, but wanted to take advantage of being able to take care of those folks who are struggling with uh, mental health and also physical limitations uh, that we can't label, uh, but not also not under truly understand. Mayor John Ingen mentioned that the reason that the support of the bridge apartments will not cost the city any money and would allow Western Montana Clinic to support these residents uh, ongoing through the sale of the bridge apartments. I understand that Jesse wants to paint a broad brush, but so far the city wants to facilitate the sale of the bridge apartments while retaining the current residents. And that's kind of like the justification behind it all. All right, so uh, if you want to learn more information about the city of Missoula and more about what's going on and agendas and more, you can go on to ci.missoula.mt. US. All right, so uh, I do have a fun video for you guys. This is from our uh, time on the street, uh, the dude I just drew on the street. So they shot some behind the scenes stuff. And then when I come back, we're going to talk about uh, more art things uh, uh, for uh, First Friday. Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, what up? What's up, everybody? It's like nine in the morning. Um, Getting ready to go to. Where are we going? We're going to the old MCAT building and we're doing uh, a little draw thon for a sp uh, on the street for a thing called Sparks Ignite Artistic Learning or something like that. Yeah, we're doing. It'll be near the farmer's market. We're doing something like that. So here we are coming up on the 
thrown up on the building. That used to be considered a pet. Yeah, I've been parking this area a long time. Gonna do a little bit of drawing, a little bit of, a little bit of filming. Yep. A little bit of all sorts of things. Are you excited, Graham? Yep. Excited. Oh, there's Scott. There's Scott. There's Scott. Alright, you're the star yeah. of the show. I'm, uh, I gotta do this. I'm the one doing this stuff. There it is. Whoa! It's Whoa. like you're zooming in without <laughs> actually zooming in. Whoa. Whoa! I haven't been in this building in a while. It's been a while. It's been. It's like a lot a, of men lost their lives uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an anime scene where. Uh, uh, Scott! We're like, uh, we're home. We go, we go back to. <laughs> Chewy. We're home. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and then we have everything right here. There's what I gotta do is start cleaning up. There's the I got sharpies, so you can draw on the sharpies. Well yeah, I mean. <laughs> of course. It wouldn't be much of a challenge if it was just pencil. The pencil also it's kinda hard it's kinda hard to take it permanent with something. Right. <laughs> here I am out in the public. Uh, this is Missoula. It's Missoula. This is the town. That I, I grew up in and I'm still living in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? Uh, got a shop over there. I don't, I don't know what to do. To buy anything. Uh, got wardens over there. It's cool. Um, grizzly liquors. And another another alcohol business. Um, pie hole. That's where you can get your pizzas. And then there's the rest of town out there. I don't know what to tell you guys. I mean, I hope I hope the people watching enjoy watching me draw with uh, sh sharpies. <laughs> well, we're all set up. We're all set up. We're ready to do this. Dude, I just drew on the street. Part of this is all about just basically just uh, seeing if anyone can uh, come up with a drawing idea that'll challenge your own. Yes. That's the deal. And so for my first, because uh, in conjunction with Arts and Education Week, uh, a lot of art installations are going to be popping up all over downtown Missoula, but ours is special because we got Rowan and then we got the guy behind the camera. I forgot his name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, part... But, you know, parts of education and arts is that there's always a bully in arts. So, for the first one, I want you to draw a bully in arts. The, the bully of arts? The bully of arts. The bully of I arts. came up with the idea, I was like, art and education, what does school usually have? Bullies. So let's just start off with, let's start off with something controversial. Alright, you ready? Off, let's start off with Alright, and you got five minutes to do this. I'm going to start the timer and I'm going to start the time lapse. Alright. Alright, time lapse has started. And okay. and go. So you got five minutes. <laughs> of course, he's an artist, so that's why he's wearing a hat. Is he wearing sunglasses too? No, this would be his eyes. Or you could just make him like a typical '80s bully, yeah, like at a ski resort. Typically, <laughs> 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 a ski resort, and we got him scouting. The nice part about this corner is that we're constantly in the shade, but also it's not uh, summer anymore, so it's kind yeah. of counterintuitive. Well, half in the closet don't think that they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that I might have just drawn, I might have accidentally just drawn like... It uh, looks Chris, like an anime character. Might, I might have actually drawn like a Chris, Chris O'Neill uh, from you gotta, any place. <laughs> you gotta make him say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some dirt in your I'm eye. Gonna put, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put some paint in your eye. But then he has a tragic past, you make him, oh, I guess I can relate to you. I guess it's okay. I guess it's okay for you being a jerk to everyone. 
I guess it's all right. I mean, you're an artist as well, like me. So I can't, I can't be as mad as you as I thought I could. We'll give him a bit. We'll give him a bit of my rags to make him look a bit more foolish. And there we have our our bully. See. Nice. Oh, that's great. Like, <laughs> like I just imagined him like just <laughs> taking your paintbrush as you're painting and puts it in his mouth and he's like <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do about it. Yeah, he's a Well we're taking a little break here. Scott's getting us tacos, but he left taking like a bit, taking a bit of a breather. Yeah. People, people passing by. Yeah. You know, we might need to get more paper if more people show up. Yeah. But if not, that's fine. We made, a, we did a lot of good drawings actually. Yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of some of these. Yeah. Well, we'll show a time lapse either before yeah, we'll or show you, after this segment. We'll, yeah, we'll show the time lapse afterwards. Uh, we'll probably show photos of the finished stuff. You know. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yes. Uh, Scott disappeared. <laughs> I'm honestly kind of convinced he, somebody kidnapped him. Somebody must have kidnapped Scott. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, guys. This is, uh, this was a cool page that we were getting here. Yeah, how much did we get? Or did um, you get? Well, technically, we would have had $30. But in the hour, we got 20. Nice. So it was a fun day. Um, like I just said in the before, it was a great experience, a new learning experience. Um, having that face-to-face -face thing was awesome. I, I never really get that reaction, same reaction from people online because, you know, it's not really face to face, but being able to see people, uh, you know, being able to take their idea and really um, making it, a, you know, a reality pretty much with my art, I'm, I'm super glad that I could, I could do that. Yeah. And it was really cool. I ran into some really cool people and yeah. Yeah, sweet. Do you want to list great. all the social medias again? Uh, list the social medias. Go to Do I Just Drew on YouTube. And you can check our Facebook out on Facebook. Uh, Spreadshirt. Go to our Spreadshirt. Uh, you know, don't, don't go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find me on Instagram, no more dot arts. Uh, my Twitter, which is Nora with an exclamation mark. Uh, you can read my comic, Punch Drunk, on ShrineComics.com. Uh, yeah, this is a fun event. Um, yeah, well, yeah, we're going to tag everything. more stuff like this in the future. Yeah. I, I definitely think that this was really fun. Yeah. So we'll probably pack everything up and... Uh, we'll pack everything yeah, up we'll, and Hopefully we'll get a new, next episode sometime we'll see. in a few, in, in a month or so. Month? We'll see. A couple weeks, then we'll... See ya. See y'all. Hey guys, welcome back. It is uh, the rest of the show, which I'm talking about. Well, uh, hey. Art leads to art, and we got some more art for you guys. Um, <laughs> I gotta stop saying it like that. But let's kick things off with our first uh, part of the art. It is a art. Uh, this you know every first Friday of the month, Missoula hosts a bunch of events across town to uh, celebrate the arts, and they have galleries open from five to about eight. Uh, special hours a Friday night, and they'd be like, "Hey, check out this art. A lot of great art stuffs going on here." And Kicking things off with uh, uh, Albert Farr, um, and this is uh, a little bit of background on this one, and this is going to be at the uh, Life, uh, oh no, that's events, 
This is Albert Farr, Vessels of Communication. It's going to be featured at the Clay Studio of Missoula. Uh, for many uh, works featured in the Vessels of Communication, Albert, uh, Albert Farr uh, uses a porcelain materials to create artwork for using 3D printed molds. The, this first series I in the New Direction has explored is a collection of ceramic book folds. Albert Farr is a ceramic artist, 3D printer, and a ceramic uh, ma uh, materials developer and a teacher. He earned his MFA in Alfred University and has taught ceramics and sculptures at Washington University in St. Louis, the arts, uh, the Clay Art Center, uh, gr uh, Greenwich, uh, Greenwich uh, House Pottery in New York, and many workshops around the country. His art has been featured in Sculpture Magazine, Art and Perception, uh, Ceramics Monthly. He has shown his art throughout the U.S. and in South Korea, Argentina, and the Netherlands. So it's a great experience. You guys can go to the Clay Studio of Missoula, and his art will be featured starting tonight, if it hasn't already been out. All right, so featuring as well is – oh, actually, I do want to go back to the Clay Studio because this is a bonus, and this is uh, – this is kind of like their opening and opening vessels of communication, Albert Farr. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. Never mind. Moving on. Uh, uh, 406 Cup Show. This is Wildfire Ceramic Studios. This is a new uh, ceramic studio. It seems, I, well, it's new to me or it's new to uh, MissoulaEvents.net. Uh, is excited to announce its first uh, 406 Cup Show. The 406 Cup Show aims to celebrate and explore tradition and innovative techniques. Art innovative techniques artists are using to create ceramic cups today. The show features 406 cups from artists all around the country. The opening reception is from 5 to 9. Wild uh, Wildfire Ceramic Studios will also be hosting the Taco Guys with the band uh, Wildfire Ceramic Studios. Is excited to announce their first show of many years, uh, the 406 Cup Show. Uh, da -da -da. And yeah, so... Pretty much, yep. And up next, we have Arts and Above, featuring uh, artist Bev Glukert, and this is going to be at the Artist Shop. Uh, and uh, Bev Glukert is the is a well-featured artist, and she's done a lot of stuff with the Ronan Street uh, inside uh, 401, uh, 406 Art inside the uh, Art and Framing Shops, but she'll be at the Artist Shop uh, from October 1st to the 31st. Up here, you can see that the uh, picture has been put on its side, but this is part of the first Friday here at the Missoula Public Library, and starting at 5 p.m. here is that a Home Resource and the Missoula Public Library come to take a look at the amazing items created at the 2021 Spontaneous Construction Event. These items will be sold on the online auction and will be at the library for a couple weeks, so head down any time to take a peek. There are items on the uh, first, third, and fourth floors. Second floor, absolutely not. Not going to happen, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's about it for uh, those uh, kind of art features. But also, uh, if you're interested in learning more, uh, is that the Zach is doing their annual monster project. The seventh annual monster project gallery opening is happening for five to eight tonight. Originally conceived by the nine-year-old Asa Simentenka, the uh, Missoula Monster Project is also a collaboration between school children and adult artists. So the school children, kindergarten, uh, primarily would uh, draw monsters of their own creations, and then a uh, 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 major artists throughout the city of Missoula will be uh, tasked with recreating them in their own art medium. So it's it's a great experience. They have the uh, before and after kind of thing. It's really cool. Uh, First Friday Float Missoula. So uh, First Friday Float Missoula featuring local Native American artists, and this is Float Missoula. It's located downtown on the actually on the hip strip which is more kind of uptown on the other side of Higgins Bridge, and it's kind of like uh, a place that does massages and stuff and is a full immersion tank as well for people who are just, you know, want to just float in salt water and just uh, take, uh, get out of it, everything and anything. Anyways, that's pretty much it for your first Friday events as well. I also wanted to mention, um, do I have enough time for that? Uh, yeah, I do have enough time for that. Let's throw it over to uh, one of our uh, uh, old old guys from way back in the day, uh, not old guys, but some familiar faces from ba way back when. Um, he uh, had a uh, art residency here in the, uh, here at the Missoula Public Library, and MCAT is hosting a filmmaker every month to uh, kind of showcase. this. He was kind of like an old MCAT uh, co-worker and stuff like that from back in the day, moved uh, since to moved on to brighter things up in Hamilton, doing more things with them, uh, with the Corvallis school system. But without further ado, here is a trailer for his movie that he premiered this week. Um, but if you are interested in being a, a resident, a filmmaking a resident here at MCAT, we, you can contact us at 5426 two two eight or you can email us mcat at mcat.org so without further ado here's this and then when i come back i'm going to talk about the rest of events a uh, rest of your events that are happening this weekend
chief doctor in charge of research upon the Odyssey. We set out 19 months ago on this endeavor. We had goals, we had plans, we had theories for scientists. But now we have something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it already came, and it did premiere uh, with a full packed house at the Ferroplex. Um, and uh, the Ferroplex is uh, the, the movie theater that's in Hamilton, Montana. And they uh, promote a lot of uh, local filmmakers uh, around town as well. Uh, yeah, it, it is just a great experience. Um, and uh, and he was featured here this week at um, at, the, at the library uh, at our MCATS. Uh, Filmmaking residence. So, if you have a if you have a film that you have in the kitty and the can or whatever you like to call it, you can uh, get in contact with us uh, five four two six two two eight. You can also email us mcat at mcat dot org. Um, so far, I believe that we have another residency happening in October. Uh, the uh, father of the uh, kid who uh, wanted, who created the monster project for the Zack, uh, Andy Mintenka, will be featured there as well. And if you haven't uh, heard of him, he was heavily featured uh, with uh, uh, music videos through the Decemberists. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about some events that are happening here in the, uh, the city of Missoula and beyond. Uh, the pickleball. Hey. Everyone likes pickleball. Pickleball. Every the, everyone talks about pickleball. Pickleball. This. Come learn about basics of pickleball at the Lifelong Learning Center. They have these events happening weekly, and uh, they're already happening right now as I'm stalking right now. So, but I just wanted to kind of say that this class is designed for beginners and anyone who wants to experience uh, what everyone is talking about. Uh, pickleball is played indoors, court similar to uh, badminton, using paddles similar to table tennis. So it kind of feels like. Uh, Squash. Anyways, uh, yeah, y y uh, th there's a bunch of classes regarding all sorts of things uh, with the Lifelong, Lear Lear Lifelong Learning Center, and it's located uh, by the old uh, Coke plant off of 3rd Street. Uh, you can't miss it. Uh, you can also look it up as well. It's called Google. Uh, <laughs> preschool uh, screening clinic. So if you have a young kid and you're looking to go to a clinic for health reasons and you're just trying to figure out, it's like, oh, okay, just a simple place for me to go to check on my kid who is aged 0 to 5. Uh, free development preschool screening clinic for a kids ages 0 to 5 uh, in the Lolo and Woodman School District will be held at the Lolo Elementary on Friday uh, from 9 a.m. Uh, so they're starting right now. If you want to call, you can call Kathy at uh, 273-0451 to schedule an appointment for your child's screening or receive more information. Uh, story time and tiny tales of the public library. So the difference between story time is for kids three and over older and their caregivers. Fridays for stories at 1030 for stories, fun, and box art at level two. Story time will be recorded and posted online later at the library's website if you are afraid to come in. Uh, tiny tales uses sound rhythms and uh, movement to help your child learn to read. Participants will sing song, learn finger plays, and nursery rhymes. This is more interactive for kids. It's great to be done, and it's in the level two program room here at the public library. Uh, painting and yarns. Uh, so uh, painting classes, you want to do some painting. Um, you have some yarns. They usually do it on the third floor in one of the uh, conference rooms as well. You can come here, and you can ask for directions here, and it starts at 1230 around noonish, and you can find out more information by going to the Missoula Public Library uh, website. Um, Okay, so here's something for nonprofits looking for money. And so they're doing a grant, Grantsman Smith, uh, Grantsmanship 
fundamentals. Lifelong Learning Center, uh, a host of many adult uh, continuing education courses, will teach an art and science proposal writing and other aspects of grantsmanship, including funding research, budgets, and effective proposal proposal writing suitable for beginners and experienced grant writers. This course is hands-on practice in a workshop format to provide both feedback on your work and improvement of critical editing skills. Class fee is about $82, but the uh, it's uh, number of sessions four, and this is good for uh, in the long run. It's actually pretty cheap because if you're looking to get a lot of grants for nonprofits, this is the place to do it. And uh, yeah, uh, crafty hour project session at the Create Art Bar. There is a do-it-yourself studio and bar. It's kind of like mixing bar and arts together. It's creative. Uh, the full menu of projects is available for you to choose from as well as the full bar menu. This is during happy hour and starts at 3 this afternoon. Base camp program, so just so you guys know, the old library acro uh, just across the street from behind me from, you know, if I'm speaking more generally, uh, direction. Uh, there, you know, base is uh, based out of uh, Missoula Parks and Recs. It is a kind of an after school program, uh, in-house daycare, uh, and they do this for uh, and they're doing anything at five o'clock. They're bringing our own brand of fun activities for all ages for the former public library. And you and these are weekly programs. And it's located at base. Uh, and it's free. Um, let's see. All right. So yeah, like I said, uh, like uh, y you already know all about the uh, first Friday events happening as well uh, throughout this time as well. So here are some of the late night events that are happening. Super Friends, uh, the VRTX. Uh, Fitness Rooftop Hip Hop Roof Party for people who are 18 plus, and this is called Super Friends. Karaoke at Westside Lanes, as always. Josh Farmer Band will be playing at the Union Club. And those are your Friday events. Here, kicking off your Saturday events, you know, you, you get your Farmer's Market, you got your People's Market, and you got your River Street Market. Uh, and River Street Market is at the uh, Carousel, which is usually originally right next to under the bridge in the bridge area in that parking lot. But with all the construction that's happening on the Higgins Bridge, we won't see them uh, over uh, at that location under the bridge until next summer. Moon Randolph Homestead opens Saturdays. Um, this is going to go well until the end of October. This is uh, Missoula's homestead bought through the open space bond and it is to uh, look at one of the earliest homesteads that are still around in Missoula so you can kind of see how Missoulians were living way back when 100 plus years ago. Fix a Clinic, a uh, Missoula Public Library maker space. The Missoula Public Library space it by is hosting home resources beloved Fix a Clinic for the month of October. Uh, during this event, you can bring your own worn, broken, or manufactured manufacturing items to the Fix-It Clinic to learn how to repair them. Skilled volunteers will help you uh, teach you how to repair those items by sharing their knowledge and expertise. And this is happening at the Missoula Public Library's Makerspace tomorrow at 11. Flannel Fest. Hey, you love wearing flannel? There's a kid that comes to our Saturday drop-ins who loves wearing flannel all the time. This is the place for him. Is the Southgate Mall is doing a flannel fest. Everything flannel. Uh, they're celebrating grand opening uh, oh wait, of Missoula's first Shields store. A, a festival of all things fall and fun is coming to the Southgate Mall. So throw your favorite flannel shirt and join us for the Flannel Festival. Live ma music, hourly giveaways, uh, just a bunch of things. Grizz gear, more uh, local beers, tap jerky, tasting, all this stuff. A mini pumpkin uh, decorating live community art projects, all sorts of crazy things with that. Which also brings me to our Saturday drop-ins, which starts at 1 and goes to about 3. Uh, kids are encouraged to do some stop animation, filmmaking, all sorts of things like that. Uh, the whole idea is it's a first come, first serve, but we cap it out at six people. I talked a little bit about the kickoff of the show, but I wanted to uh, uh, re revive it again. Revival Comedy Night for Animals. Uh, Zootown Arts Community Center is hosting a comedy night uh, Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. Doors open at 7, and it is $10 in advance at the door, and you can purchase tickets when you get there. Revival Comedy Night returns to support Animals, the No-Kill Adult Center, and Food Bank, which has sent over 700 tons of pet food and supplies to shelters, families, and uh, families in need, and seniors. How can you support Animals? is easy. You can go on down for an hour of laughter, punch a bowl. Uh, uh, headliner uh, Zach Jarvis, a past Montana comedy champion winner and a Big Sky Comedy Festival alum. And then also some of the late night events is solid uh, sound karaoke at the Bull Dodge Lounge at Westside Lanes. More karaoke. Auntie E is going to be at the Union Club. Uh, Chris Moon will be at the Ballander every Saturday. All right. So let's Kind of go through a couple of the uh, Sunday events. Target Range Farmers Market is going to go well into October, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Target Range uh, School. Walk to End Alzheimer's is going to be at the Southgate Mall or To Be Determined, and it starts at 1 p.m. Uh, 
Audacious, Rollerblades, and E-Skates for Missoula Bella Vista Pavilion. So it's that kind of huge pavilion next to all the uh, fields and the playgrounds uh, at Fort Missoula Regional Park. Join the fun and come rollerblade with us. Families with children in our any age are welcomed, whether experienced or beginners. And they are happy to help you start off with every aspect of the process. Is that 2.30 p.m. And this is the same day that they do a bunch of those. Uh, they have a bunch of soccer games for a bunch of kids, and that's through their YMCA as well. Uh, electronic longboards are welcome. This is a community event hosted by Jupiter and Natalie uh, and is free of charge. Uh, it's just uh, encourage people to come together and meet and greet and rollerblade and roller skate. And maybe you can make that meet that special rollerblader buddy. Uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, uh, Arias for Autumn, a gala concert, Zootown Arts Community Center is doing an event at 6 p.m. UM Opera is ready to sing to Autumn. Please join us for the delightful event featuring a gala concert of Aries and Assembles and a preview for upcoming productions. Cash bar provided for the Zach Show. Tickets range from $10 to $15 depending. I believe MCAT will also be live streaming this because I got an email from the event coordinator at Zach asking us to do another stream for the Zach on Sunday and I believe this is the event. So. Starts at 6 p.m. And those are pretty much all your events for everything you need to know about uh, Missoula, what's going on. If you want to learn more information, go to MissoulaEvents.net. If you want to learn more about uh, MCAT and all our uh, availability, we check out cameras. We uh, rent studio use for people to use for their non-commercial uh, projects as well. And if you're interested, you can log on to MCAT.org or you can call us at 542-6228. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. It's October, people. Things are going to get colder out there.